In the last video lecture, we talked about the different types of visual aids you can use in your speech. Today, we're going to talk about how those can be created and how they're used effectively in the speech. The most important thing about creating a visual aid is to make sure it's made and created well in advance. There is no way that you can create a useful visual aid if you do it at the last minute. We're talking about the kind of communication skills that you will use eventually in your workplace or in your, if you're teaching or if you're presenting to your church. You don't want to do that with a poorly made visual aid, a poorly made graphic. Uh, you need to have time to get them professionally made uh, or printed. You need to have time to practice with them. And so this isn't something you can throw together the night before your speech is due. Whether you are using a graph, a chart, a PowerPoint, all of your visual aids should be kept as simple as possible. Your chief goal is for the audience to be able to read them. The main thing you're going to be judged on in your visual aids is how easily they help communicate your message and how easily they are digested by an audience. Um, Bells and whistles like all of the animations and the special effects in PowerPoint just get in the way. Uh, lots of sparkle and glitter on your, on your chart or your graph just get in the way. It muddies it. Get those out of there. Keep it clean. Keep it professional. Keep it simple. Make sure that your visual aids are large enough. If you're going to be using a photo, it has to be large enough that it can be easily seen and recognized by the people you're in the back. Using a graph or a chart or a PowerPoint, the audience has to be able to read it. If you've gotten so much information on the slide or on the graph that the fonts are so tiny they can't be read from further than three feet away, then that's an unusable visual aid. Um, a simple rule of thumb is, is, is to try it. Put your visual aid across the room and have somebody else look at it. Don't do it yourself. You know what it says. It's going to be very easy for you to read it from a half mile away. Get somebody who doesn't know what the, the visual aid, the graph, the chart is trying is supposed to say. Have them stand across the room and see if they can read it. It's simple, but it'll keep you from uh, making a major error in your speech. Make sure your graphs your charts, your PowerPoints don't have too many words on them. When I first started teaching and using PowerPoint in my history lectures, world in, in theater history, um, I, I made that mistake. I would literally have every word of my lecture up there on the slide. And it was a real frustration to my students because I would whip through it and I'd be ready to move to the next slide. And they're like, wait, no, we're still writing down what's on the slide. Just put bullet points on your graphs or on your charts or on your PowerPoints. You don't need bodies of text. That's what you are for as the speaker. The visual aid, the, the graph, the chart, the PowerPoint is just there to help the audience keep up and help them digest what you're now, saying. Let's say you have completed your visual aids. You have prepared them in plenty of time to practice and, and make sure they are they are done well, they are large enough, you can read them across the room, uh, they're simple and lean, and there isn't too much text. That's all great. Now we've got that good, powerful visual aid. How do we incorporate it into our speech? First, the visual aid needs to be placed somewhere where the entire audience can see it. Avoid passing your visual aid out among the audience. I've seen audience. this done with objects and models. I've seen it done with photographs. I've seen it done with questionnaires or, or charts that were passed out by the speaker. This completely breaks down the speaker communication process. If you remember when we talked about that communication model early uh, two weeks ago, um, we said that there is a speaker and a listener and the listener is, by nature, listening to the speaker. But if the listener has quit listening because they're looking at a photograph that was handed to them, or they're busy passing that photograph to somebody behind them for them to see it, you've lost contact with your audience. Um, do not hand them things. Um, 
if there's no way to avoid having a piece of paper or a photograph that, that you are going to give them, do it at the end of the speech. But trust me, there are more effective ways to do it. If you're using a photo, have it enlarged or put it in a PowerPoint. If you're using a chart, enlarge it, put it in a PowerPoint. Don't make it something small that you have to hand out. Only use your visual aid while you are discussing In an attention it. deficit world, um, because of the constant barrage of video that we see, I mean, we can't even watch the news without them having little tickers running across the bottom with upcoming news or incoming news. We are so unfocused these days that if we have something up in front of us to look at, we're going to look at it. And so if you leave your visual aid up longer than necessary, we're going to be focused on that and not on you and your speech. Um, and so when you are not using the visual aid, get rid of it. If it's a photo, take it down. If it's a PowerPoint, insert a black slide so that you can go to a blank screen uh, at, at when you're finished discussing that slide. But don't leave it there for the audience to focus on. Make sure to explain your visual aid clearly and concisely. There's nothing more annoying in a speech than a person who uses a visual aid and doesn't tell you why they're using it, um, or who uses it incorrectly, who, does, who thinks it's saying something that it doesn't. Uh, so if you include a visual aid, make sure that you tell us why you're including it, what its significance is, and make sure that you are saying what that visual aid says it's saying. Uh, don't use it incorrectly. Don't misinterpret how it fits into your speech. One of the most common errors I see in speaking is when students speak to their visual aid and not to the audience. This is one of the most common problems I see both with student speakers and all too often with professional speakers like teachers or preachers or business executives. Um, the PowerPoint comes on, their attention goes to that PowerPoint and they proceed to talk to it and not to us as the audience. I think this comes from a couple of things. First of all, it comes from lack of preparation. Uh, you don't you don't necessarily know what you're saying well enough not to read it off the PowerPoint. Um, the second problem comes from nervousness. It's a it's a way to take your mind your eye off the audience and focus on something less threatening. Uh, the the solution to this is first of all adequate preparation. Um, and most importantly, adequate presentation with the PowerPoint presentation. Um, it takes a certain amount of confidence and a certain amount of um, focus to press a button and know that that power button, PowerPoint slide has gone to the next slide um, without having to turn around and read it. Now, it's perfectly acceptable to glance back and make sure that you're in the right place. But that's all. You've got to turn back and talk to us. Uh, so don't let yourself get caught in the trap of talking to your PowerPoint. It goes back to that speaker's model. You need to be connecting with your audience, not with the visual aid you created in your room earlier. Finally, to effectively use visual aids in your presentation, you have to practice with the visual aid. Not only do you need to practice to make sure that you can use the visual aid, use the technology, the purpose of your, one more of the purposes of your practice, uh, of your preparation, is to also make sure that the technology is working um, as you need it to work. Um, I am very lenient when it comes to students and, and technology that's not working. We've, we've had to call off speeches in class because the computer was being glitchy or the, the, the projector was down. And that's fine in a classroom situation, but if you're a professional speaker, you are going to look unprofessional and foolish if you show up for a major presentation and you haven't bothered to check to make sure that the room has the working technology you need to effectively give your presentation. Um, so you need to check the room. You need to check the equipment. You need to make sure you know how to run the equipment. You need to make sure that the that that uh, you understand the visual aid you've created and that you can run it while delivering your speech. It's it's like patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. You're doing two different things. To do that takes practice and preparation. Um, I can't overstress that. Um, 
one of the reasons I think that we include the use of a, of a visual aid in your speech uh, for at least one assignment is to see that you have the skills to do these kinds of presentations. Because when you go out into the professional world, that's what they're going to expect.